How is everyone? Can you hear me? I don't know. Why is the screen black? Hey, can you see me? Can you see me and hear me? Wilma! <laughs> Can you hear me though? Perfect. So hello, let's see who I got here. Good grief. I can't keep up with the chat. Steve, how's it going? Anfield. Dwight, CB Railroader. And of course, Uncle Wilmer's in the house. Dwight. Uh, let's see, Art, New Fenris, Nathan, Jerry. Dave, BNSF, Digger. As you can see, I'm starting this just a little early because I wanted to make sure everything was good. You never know with YouTube live, live streaming. School kill. How's it going? Yeah, I know we still have real, really five minutes before the start, but we're going to do some fun stuff on the bridge tonight. And I have a thermos full of coffee. Anfield. How's it going? I want to make sure I don't miss anybody. See, coffee. I've got my KCS kind of worn off thermos, but... <laughs> get all the amenities out of the way so we can i don't know how long this is going to take me it might take me hey randall ellison might take me 10 minutes it might take me an hour and 10 minutes so i don't know how long this is Digger, did I say hi to you? I don't remember. If I didn't, hello. <laughs> Everybody knows it's been um, 
it has the weather here in East Texas has been something else. Foot of snow on the ground and expecting another foot tomorrow. It got down below zero last night. <laughs> that is just totally uh, unnatural for this part of the country. So, nope. I'm not, I've got heat out in my shed and I've got it running. I'm just not out there. I'm in my workshop to, tonight because I'm painting. I do most of my painting out here. Painting and decoder installing and that kind of stuff I'll do out here in my workshop. It is, Dave. <laughs> Winter Wonderland on steroids. It is crazy. I... I mean, I grew up in this area and I've never seen it snow twice in one year and I've never seen it below zero. So it, this is just unreal. And nobody around here, there's no snow plows. So the roads just stay how the roads are. The only people can really get out are people with four wheel drive vehicles. So um, I'm going to attempt to go out to the store later on and see, see if uh, that works. Yeah. Global warming, Dave. That's it. <laughs> I think the global warming machine was turned off this week. <laughs> Yeah, Dwight, I uh, I have, luckily we, I mean, the power went out a couple for a little while. I don't know how long during the middle of the night because I was asleep. So, um, <clears throat> but I haven't lost any power yesterday or today. So, and they were going to, they said they were going to do ro those rolling blackouts, but I haven't experienced it yet. So if I leave you during the middle of the live stream, that's why it, it'll be a rolling blackout. So. <laughs> I know Wilmer. How, how how did that happen? How come it's warmer in Western or yeah, Western Pennsylvania than it is here? Yeah, Randall, that's uh, same here. We're getting for getting ready for round two tonight. So starting after midnight, it's supposed to snow again. Maybe another foot. So we might have end up with two feet of snow on the ground. <laughs> this is just unheard of. Yeah, I, uh, what I have done is I've been running my faucets. The water bill is going to be a little high, but it's better than broken pipes under the foundation of the house. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I can warm up Wilmer. <laughs> I need to move to Pennsylvania. <laughs> Oh, Steve, On, only 69 in Tampa. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. I know, Dave. Yeah, more snow than Wisconsin. How, how does this happen? I have no clue. So <laughs> it's never, as far as I know, it's never happened before. I mean, we broke all kinds of temperature records and I'm sure the snow depth records as well. So I don't know what the official was, uh, amount of snow was, but I did go in my backyard. You saw my announcement video yesterday. Uh, and I had 11 inches. So wow, Dwight, that's something. Haven't had five foot deep drifts. I've had some drifts that were a little, um, deeper than the 11 inches, but I tried to get a fair measurement. So, so Nathan asks is if I've seen layout set in the fifties. Yes. And I, I did a video on one, um, at a museum I volunteer for every month. Uh, the RD Moses layout in Jefferson, Texas, it's set in the late fifties. So,
Uh, so you might go look at that vi video, Nathan, and see if you if there's anything on there you like. Hey, Steve, how's it going? Norfolk Southern 5107, Jazco. How are you doing? Hey, Vinny. I got my glue also, Vinny, so <laughs> I'm set for a little while. <laughs> I uh, I bought some, uh, some of that Model Master glue online and... Uh, I bought three three bottles, so uh, hopefully I'm set for for a little while. I don't, Nathan. I don't have any that were made in the fifties. Uh, I mean, my some of my locomotives on my layout, the actual prototype was built in the fifties. Uh, some F units and uh, my Jeep sevens and Jeep nines, they were. They were built in the uh, 40s and the 50s. So um, the model itself, of course, they're newer. But but the prototypes, yes, were built in the 40s and 50s. So. Steve, 87th PSAP. You're just bragging. <laughs> I've got a foot of snow on the ground and it's 15 degrees here. <laughs> Iron horse route. How are you doing? So, what I wanted to talk about tonight, and I'll, I'll do announcements towards the end. Um, what I wanted to talk about tonight, you know, last, uh, last on track Tuesday, I did, we, uh, started building the little girder bridge and I didn't want to spend time with you watching me glue a bunch of stuff together. So, um, I did want to make a couple things clear because, the Walther's instructions for these are not real clear. I don't know if you can see those. So because you can build two different types of bridges, they don't tell you which are the optional parts, which is just maddening. So you just got to ha have to kind of figure it out for yourself uh, what the optional parts are on this bridge. And... Um, what I ended up doing is I used, of course, I'm using the bridge track, which is part 12 up here. I'm definitely using that. Uh, let me tilt this down a little bit more. Uh, I also used, of course, the, the sides and the, and the railing plates that go on, on the top and the bottom. I use those. Um, I use the open bottom frame number six. Um, and I use the supports, which are up here. The ones I used were the uh, little triangle shaped ones. And that's what I used. And there are two different styles of foot pads. Um, it shows them together, but I don't know. I, I kept both of them, but on the box, it only shows one style of foot pad. So I, I don't know if they're supposed to go together or not. You see, uh, you see 13 and 19 there. So the only thing I put on was the, uh, the number 13 and sorry, look. And on the box, I don't know where fuzz came from. So on the box, that's all it shows in the example on the box. So 
I guess I could use the other ones. I, I don't know. I'm going to have to decide them. But what I wanted to do night, tonight is show you that I got it together. Uh, that was all the parts I used. Um, you can see here the these little... Um, boy, I'm just not getting that in the camera real well, am I? So I use, I, I put these in and they go underneath the railings. So the railings were, um, uh, the railings were kind of difficult. And you would think, no, you just glue them on. Now they don't fit real well. So I've, I actually, before I painted it and I, I have painted it, um, I had to put um, putty in the railings so to putty the seams because they were so bad and they were twisted and warped and just, <laughs> I, I think Walters could do better for the price that they charge for these kits. I, I don't know what, you know, some of these kits, some of these kits are really expensive and for the price they charge you, you know, having warped parts and things like that and parts that don't fit well is just not acceptable to me. So, <laughs> and besides this did not need to be uh, one, two, three, four, five parts that, that rail on the top, there is no reason for it to be five parts. Okay. It could have been one part easily. It's thin. It's just a, it's just a U shape kind of there was, you know, I don't, I don't know what they were thinking. Uh, their kits aren't designed very well and I hate it. Yeah. I, I just hate, they've got some buildings that are nice looking that I, and I've got a lot of Walther's kits. Don't get me wrong that I've got to build. Uh, but I've had this kind of trouble with most of them and it's just, uh, you know, it's not, uh, not a good thing. So, um, so anyway, I did get it together. Uh, it's a very simple kit once you pick out which parts you're going to use. So, <laughs> yeah, they are Vinny. They're, I mean, they, they are terrible. And, you know, when they give you optional parts and don't tell you which one to use for which version, you just have to guess. So, hi, Sparky. How's it going? Uh, whoever I missed, I hope I didn't, I probably missed a few people that came snuck in here. Um, but if I did miss your name, I, hello. <laughs> uh, I just, I don't know. So anyway, but the, uh, the way the, they didn't explain real well, the way these, uh, top plates fit on either. So I want to draw you a little picture. Um, if I can. Uh, the top plates fit on um, like this. There's a, there's the railing of the bridge. Okay. <laughs> Let's look at the bridge from the top. Okay, these these top plate these uh, top plate have a um, have an indentation that runs. See, and it's not quite exactly in the middle the way I drew it. Can you can you all see that, or is my uh, yeah? So see that picture the way I drew it. Uh, the indention is further to one side. Well, the um, the smaller portion goes on the inside of the bridge, and so the top plate sticks out over the other, the outside edge. So just if you're putting this together, remember that because it's not anywhere in the instructions. So, <laughs> um, the other thing is. If you're going to sell a bridge, why in the world are you going to sell the abutments separately? Yeah. <laughs> but you have to buy two separate kits because you need the abutments for 
the bridge to sit on, obviously. So, <laughs> so I put these together. Once again, you've got instructions that look like this. So tell me which one you use without sitting here and studying it for a while. Oh, do I use the uh, tall head plate or the short one? I, you, know, you, just, uh, you just don't know. So, so what I did, um, <clears throat> okay, Iron Horse Route, go grab your dinner. You're going to need it. <laughs> John Arthur, how you doing? Uh, to make more money, that's right, Wilmer. So, these bridge abutments, um, they're actually, they actually come taller, so you have to cut them to the height you want them, all right? So I did that. Um, you basically only have four pieces on one side. You've got, you've got the head plate. <laughs> Good, Vinny. <laughs> you got the head plate. You got the side pieces. Uh, you, you can, there is a piece, so you can put these on straight. Uh, I'm angling mine back, actually. Um, and then you've got the main part in the middle. So I did. That's the only four pieces you really need. So. And I, I cut them to the height that I needed them cut. So and there there are lines scribed on the back uh, at different heights. So I cut mine to the uh, the line that I needed. So, anyway, just wanted to tell you about that before, before we started. And it's, we're already 15 minutes in. So, all right. So, here's the bridge. Uh, I painted it with uh, a tester's color called flat aluminum. And what I like about the flat aluminum, it, it's a really good color, uh, silver color for things that are outside in the weather. Um, so I, I think it's a great, great color. So what I, what I have done is I've painted it flat aluminum. It's got some, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Some metallic in it, but it, it's a, a flat base. So I, I really like the color and it's just testers flat aluminum. That's all it is. Yes, this is HO scale. So, uh, I did this, John, with an airbrush. Okay, so it, it's an enamel base. And the reason I use an enamel base is because I'm going to weather it tonight. And um, what I want to do with weathering it is uh, is I'm going to try some experimenting. So being that I'm going to try some experimenting, if I use uh, acrylics for experimenting, if I don't like what happens, I can wipe them off and not hurt the base underneath. So that's why I I gave it a base coat with an enamel um, with an enamel paint. So I have. A multitude of colors sitting up here. I want to see if I can move this a little bit closer. So what I'm going to do, and guys, I am going to buy me a new camera before my next. <laughs> my my camera that I can move around isn't real good, and this is just the laptop camera. So uh, I hope you can bear with me this time, because, but I'm buying a new camera. So I have a good camera when we do... Um, when we do the next on track Tuesday, when I do the next one. So, oh, one other thing is here's the bridge track. I've painted white. Now you might think that's counterintuitive, but uh, hey, there's Georgia Sunbell. How you doing, Anthony? Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you might think it's counterintuitive to paint these white uh, because these are ties, but it's not. It's uh, and you'll see why later on if I get that far. But the first thing I'm going to do is um, I want this to be 
black. Um, and it's not, if you've ever seen anything in uh, nature, most things are just not solid black. They're, they're more of a very, very dark gray, especially things that are out in the weather. So I'm going to grab um, a couple colors of paint here. I've got some, um, these are both Vallejo paints. So I've got, um, I've got one called, uh, black gray and another one called, uh, engine gray. So I might mix them together. Or I might not. I, I end up usually mixing a lot of my paints and, um, yeah, the the engine gray is just a little little dark, or I mean a little light for what I want. So I'm gonna mix the two together and see what I get. Um and I bought these little craft sticks at Michael's, you know, there's a bag of about ten thousand in here, so they for a couple bucks. So I, I like to use them to to mix my paint. Um And I, you know, always experiment with um, mixing paint on your own. You you won't be disappointed. Uh, just keep mixing it till you get the color you want. Because um, you might not find the, the color you want exactly. So if you uh, if you mix things, you can make whatever you want. All right, so. I think that's more the color I want. I mixed about half and half of that engine gray and gray black. So uh, I'm going to get my, uh, since one was model air, it would have been thin enough to spray, but the other one was not model air. It was, uh, so it's not thin enough to spray. So I'm going to add a little bit of airbrush thinner and don't let the label fool you. This is my home brew stuff. So. Uh, it's real. This, let me see the price on this $13.25 for this. Okay. I can mix the same stuff up for about $9 a gallon. Okay. So don't, don't waste your money. Uh, let me grab something real quick. Uh, and I tell you what I use. I tell you how I mix this up. This is um, this is about ten to twenty percent denatured alcohol, and denatured alcohol is a little bit better paint solvent than isopropyl is. So just and you can go get a a quart of it at Home Depot or Lowe's for its camp stove fuel. Same stuff uh, for five bucks. And then I get a gallon of um, distilled water. And I pour a little bit of the distilled water out because I just want to keep it in the gallon jug. And then I pour in the denatured alcohol. And then a few drops of dish soap. And enough dish soap so you can see that it kind of foam on top, but not enough so it, it really puts a head on the top of the stuff. All right. And the dish soap's the same... Same stuff that, uh, same reason you use it like in wet water. It's, uh, it, um, you know, it breaks up the tension, the surface tension of the paint. So, and that's all you need to do to make thinner. It's the exact same stuff that you're going to buy in here. Believe me. Um. All right, so what I'm trying to do is make this run about like milk. You don't want to thin acrylic paint quite as much as enamels. So I say enamel, do it like skim milk, and acrylic paint, do it like whole milk. But you want to spray, especially the Vallejo stuff, you want to spray it at a, at a higher pressure. And, um, 
and with a larger nozzle if you can, if your airbrush allows it. I use a, uh, I've got a 0.4 nozzle on mine, so. And just a little bit more. Well, I think that's about right. I can always uh, I can always go back and adjust it if I need to put more paint or more thinner, whatever. And I want to get it mixed up really good. I, I don't want, and I'm just using these little cups I bought from the dollar store, or my wife bought for me. So, and also these little pipettes. Now, what another thing I do, I'm going to turn my compressor on. Okay. Uh, another thing I do when I mix in, I put a couple drops of glycerin. Uh, if I was just using the paint cup, I would use um, just one drop in there. But I've got enough paint in here for maybe three or four cups full on my airbrush. So I'm going to put about three drops of glycerin in there so just a drop per paint cup and that's all you need of the glycerin and the glycerin just helps it not dry so fast is all it does um nathan i do clean it i don't um if i'm just shooting mul multiple colors in, in one evening I'll, I'll probably not clean it as well yeah, beer pong cup. <laughs> but uh, but when I'm done with my airbrush for the night, I will clean it thoroughly. All right. So once again, I'll take my little and I can usually put a good three of these in my my paint cup now I'm gonna do one other thing and I have never tried this before so you're seeing it live right here I noticed some guy on the internet on YouTube for chipping his paint making it look chip he used um, coarse ground salt uh, but that was like on a 130 second scale model okay so what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is use some regular salt, just regular old table salt on, on mine. And I'm just going to mix it with water. That's all I'm going to do. Just, I got a glass of water here. So I am going to take one of my pipettes and if this doesn't work then you'll just see me fail is all will happen so i'm just putting i've got a cup of salt here it, it was a really cool effect so if this works i'm gonna be i'm gonna be happy so i'm gonna take my bridge and i just put water in the salt and then i'm gonna just in spots if it'll work I'm just dabbing the, the little, the salt mixed with water. That's all I'm doing. And you'll see what happens afterwards. I'm just, I've just got salt mixed with water is all I, and I'm just dabbing it on. I don't know if this will work. So we're going to see. And I, re I really want to do it on the side.
and got some on the tops. So we'll see what happens. If this will even work at all. <laughs> so now I've just got I've just got some salt mixed with water on there before I spray. And if you can uh, see what I'm doing, I'm just spraying over a. Uh, All right. I'm going to go in real lightly. I don't want to I don't want to completely cover this. So, um because I want some of that silver to show through the black I'm going to go in, uh, I want to put a real light coat when you're doing this, these acrylics. You want a real light coat on there. And that will make it tacky and help you, to, uh, help you to come back with a second coat. And I hope you can kind of see what I'm doing there. And I think this is blowing most of that salt off, but that might be okay. Oh. And I want to turn it over and try to get the bottom here, too. Yeah, when you're using acrylics, you really want to come in with a light coat for at first. So... All right, so what I'm going to do now, is finish it up, go ahead and get everything. All right, so what I want to do is I want to I want to kind of flash dry my paint, uh, and that means I'm just going to take air and blow it over, and that helps just to dry out that first coat. Okay. All right, so I've got uh, got my first coat on there. It's dry. Now I can come back in with a little bit heavier coat this time. I say I'm not trying to cover it completely because I do want some weathering effect. All righty. I hope everybody can kind of see that. I'll pull it out some more. All right.
think I've got everything coated the way I want to. I'm going to go back in and, and just with the air now, I'm not, not spraying any paint. I'm just coming back in with the air and blowing it and help, helping to dry the, the paint. Acrylics dry really quickly, especially when you blow on them like this with the air or the airbrush. So. So I want some paint fading and some chipping and things like that to happen. And that's the, uh, that's the effect I'm going for. Okay. It's pretty much dry at the touch. Right, let's see what happens. Okay, give it just a minute. What I'm going to do is <clears throat> I give it just a minute to dry. And then I'm going to come back with my uh, with just a brush and brush it with water to get the excess salt off of it. So let's give it just a minute. Uh, I'm going to dump that paint out that I had left because hopefully I'm done with it. You see there's a lot of paint left in your brush when you when you finish. So make sure I get that out. Um I said when I when I'm brushing several colors, I clean it, but I don't really clean it thoroughly. So So while I'm looking at the do you sometimes put movie characters figures? I am curious. No, <laughs> I haven't put any figures on my layout yet because I just haven't gotten that far with it, Nathan. So, so I hope I'm not missing any questions too. If I, uh, if I am, please let me know. I'm going to go ahead and clean my airbrush. I clean the little cup out. So. And I've got somewhere, I've got this little set of, uh, this little cotton set. I don't kind of clean the tip off. Uh, ran it through once. And then what I'm going to do is you can either do this by holding something against the tip. Or you can do it. Uh, some airbrushes, you can actually loosen the nozzle and it will bubble back up into the cup. And all that does is it kind of back flushes. You can see it bubbling up there. Just kind of back flushes the airbrush. Yeah, you're probably right, Steve. That's probably a good idea. Now you see it's completely clean. So uh, let me just go over it. Steve suggests I go over the stiff brush first just to knock off some of the salt. And I think I'll do that. Ah, it's coming out better than I thought. 
Wow. I'll have to put that in my bag of, bag of tricks. So it's not quite dry yet. Um, but as you can see, look, look at the side of it. Can you see that? See how it's, uh, looks like chipped paint on the side. So And then I'm just brushing off with a dry brush right now. That's a good idea, Steve. Thanks. So, and then I'll try to blow a little off um, once I get all the water out of my airbrush. <laughs> try to blow a little bit of it off with the airbrush. You know, I Heath, I haven't I haven't tried anything else. I just saw this done on a video. Some guy was doing a model airplane, and so it was one thirty second scale, and he was uh, he was using real coarse salt, and so I just thought I would try it since this is HO scale, a lot smaller. Obviously, I just thought I'd try it with regular table salt. You might could do it with sand. Um, absolutely. So I kind of like that effect, actually. So, hmm. Let me just run over it with a wet. Brush real quickly. Get a little bit more off. And this is just plain water I'm using. It's just to get the excess salt off is all I'm doing. So. Yeah, you know, like I said, this is just tap water out of the faucet, so. Okay. Um, I thought it did a pretty good job. Better than I expected, especially for the first time. I'm just drying it off now, so. Um, okay, so also, uh, I've got a little chipped paint. Uh, what do I want to do next? So I want to put a little, uh, little rust into it. And what I'm going to use is, everybody recognizes this stuff, right? <laughs> you buy it at Michael's Hobby Lobby Walmart. Don't think you can't use it in your airbrush. I mean, it works just fine in an airbrush. I've used it. I've even mixed this stuff with Vallejo paints. And um, <clears throat> it works fine. So don't uh, don't be afraid to try stuff like this. Okay, so, and, and, you know, but this stuff is really thick. I mean, look at it. <laughs> it won't even pour there. All right, so this is called, this color is called uh, brown iron oxide. So I imagine it's a kind of a good uh, old rust color, you know, or new rust. I don't know. Uh, looks pretty good, but what I'm going to do... I don't quite like it. I don't, it's not quite red enough. So I've got some acrylic rust that I have mixed up here. And I'm going to add it to it. And I forget what I mixed this from. I might, it might have been Viejo Paints. Um, but I think I just, I just need a little more red in this brown. So... Of course, this is going to take a lot of thinner because it is um, 
it's really thick. <laughs> the Walmart or Michaels or Hobby Lobby, wherever I got that paint, is uh, really thick. I think think this one's from Hobby Lobby, but I don't know. Try Goglins in here. Hello, I missed you. I'm sorry. And whoever else I've missed. White Wall Wheels. See, you're in here. I know, trying to keep up with the chat while you're... Um, so you see how thick that is, right? Uh, so I definitely want some more airbrush thinner in there. And if you go too thin and add back more paint. And remember, when you're painting in scale, uh, you want to go a shade or two lighter with everything. Oh, oh the you mean the chipping, Wilmer? So that's on that side. Uh, it was a li little heavier on this side in one spot. So there you go. So that was just done with table salt. <laughs> yeah, Digger, I know there's other ways to do chipping. I, I was just trying this because I saw somebody else do it. And I wanted to copy them. <laughs> so, and I thought it would be an easy way. I want to, because I'm the I'm uh, lazy. I want to try to find the easiest way to do something. <laughs> okay, that's still a little thick. So, that um, that uh, Walmart paint and all takes a little, uh, and Hobby Lobby and Michaels paint just takes a lot more. Uh, thinner. Almost there. Well, I'm going to try that. So you can see, can you see how it's dripping on the side there? So about like milk. If it's, uh, if it's too thick, I'll know it when I go to spray it, won't I? Now this, you know what? I'm going to thin this a lot more because I don't want this to be I don't want this to really uh, stick. Well, I want this to be, there just be a hint of, of this color of rust in it. And so I'm going to take a sip of coffee. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to want this a little thinner. Yeah. Okay. So that's really thin. Um, Cause I'm going to use about three different colors of rust on this. All right. So I'm using this Brown that I've mixed with some rust paint. Um, it's really thin on purpose. So I'm just going to go in and streak it. Especially on the girders or the beams or whatever you call it. If it's uh, 
If I go in too heavy with this, it's not going to look good. I went in too heavy at one spot, but I think I think that'll be okay. All right, get a little bit on the inside here. And the ends, don't ever forget the ends. So the thing too is when you go a little thin on the paint, it it will dry lighter too. So you have to you have to take that into consideration. Get a little bit in there, uh, especially in the seams, you know, in the in the places where water would collect. Uh, so around the around the railing, want a little more. All right. Just going to go back in and dry it. A little more effect on the inside. Although you really won't see the inside much once my, uh, once the track's there. All right, so now I'm just going to go back in and air dry it a little bit. So just a nice subtle effect. If you can see that, can you see it on camera? So just trying to get a subtle effect with that. And I mixed up way too much of that, so. <laughs> I probably, wow, since it's, we only got 10 minutes, I'm probably not going to get to the, um, the concrete abutments tonight, but I want to try to get as far as I can on, um, on this. So, and one thing about acrylic, so other reason you want to clean your airbrush is they will dry in there pretty good. So. Like I said, I don't thoroughly clean it until I'm done at the end. Um, but I do wanna I do wanna try to clean it fairly well just to make sure the air the uh, paint doesn't gum up in the nozzle. So what I'm gonna do since I have that little rust effect going, is I'm going to take another cup. Oh, you know what? I don't even have to mix anything. Here's what I'm going to do. Get my Q-tip. Soak it in thinner. I kind of... Now, you just got to be careful when you do this on the end of your airbrush because you don't want to damage the needle. All right, it's fairly clean, clean enough for what I need it for. All right, so what I'm going to do now is take my black I was using 
And I'm going to pour this brown into here uh, because I want to go with a darker shade of brown. This brown rust color that I was using. And when you're doing this, you, you know, you, you want to use at least three colors um, for weathering. That'll make it that'll make it look good. All right. So now I've got a nice dark brown. Um, a nice dark brown in there. So I'm going to put that in there. And then in the end, I'm going to come back with just that regular rust color. There we go. Nice dark brown. And I'm just barely hitting it again because I don't want to cover up what I've done. I just want it light. But it just gives you a little bit of depth the more colors you use. Now I'll hit this on the insides. Not so much worried about the insides because nobody's really going to see them. But I do want to paint them. So there we go. Just a more... Uh, just a more subtle effect and it'll dry a little bit uh, it'll dry a little bit less intense so if you can see now I've got uh, two colors of rust on there and that's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna dump that out and of course spray my airbrush out I want to get all that brown dark brown out okay and i'm going to go in now with um just the regular rust color that i have mixed up here and it's just something i mixed up till i like the color so i don't <laughs> it's nothing nothing special All right, and I think I'm I'm doing this one uh, full strength, but I want to do it. I'm gonna do it along. Um, I'm gonna put my visor on so I can see what I'm doing, because uh, what I want to do is get this bottom plate uh, with this color. And there we go. I just make sure the airbrush is because water's really going to pool. down here at the bottom. And I want to go a little bit. And you can see how close I am, but I'm just going real lightly. Along the the supports. And 
and I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, I think we do do a little bit more on this side. Okay, and you'll notice I haven't uh, I haven't covered up any of that chipping effect with what I've done. So if you can see that. So I'm going to do one more thing, and then we'll call it good. Because <clears throat> I know, I think Vinny's got his show uh, after this. Isn't that right? Or am I wrong? <laughs> or am I right? Am I right? All right, so I'm going to wait and clean my airbrush afterwards um, so I don't bore you with all that. Um, with me cleaning it. Because what I want to do now... I am just going to run a bit of thinner through it just so I don't clog it up and have to. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to go in uh, with a smaller brush. And this is just kind of a, this is a good brush to do this with. Now this is, remember this acrylic paint's thinned. Uh, James is asking what brand of airbrush I'm using. It's actually a Model Master. Um, I, I like it because there's no, it's easy to clean. <laughs> oh, thanks, Heath. Wow. Yeah, it's an it's an old one, but uh, I I do like using it. What I'm going to do is take some of this uh, take some of this rust paint that I have, and I'm going to go back in and kind of stipple, especially uh, you know near my. Uh, near where my chips are. So you remember this is uh, thin to paint, so. And that's all I'm doing. I want some just spots that stand out as rust spots.
And I, I can still dry it again with my airbrush. I don't really see anything else I want to do to this. Um, when I do the concrete abutments, of course, I'm going to put rust stains and try to age the concrete, etc. But I think, uh, I think I'm going to call this one done. I'm going to put. A, I need to put a KCS sign on it and a clearance uh, highway clearance sign and that kind of stuff. But. Um, I think that's what I'm, uh, I think I'm going to call it done. What do y'all think, huh? And then there's the other side. So. Thanks. Um, hope that hopefully that looks like a weathered bridge that's been there for a while. Uh, that's what I was, I'm going for anyway. <laughs> uh, and like I said, maybe next time instead of installing, I'll we'll age the concrete abutments. Um, you know, paint and age them. So. James, airbrushing is going to be, you can do so much with airbrushing that you can't do uh, with anything else. Uh, <clears throat> that, uh, you got to, you got to get an airbrush. Even if you go get a cheap one from, uh, from somewhere I know here in the, in the U.S., um, what's the name of the place? It sells cheap Chinese junk. Um, sells tools. Anybody remember the name of the place? <laughs> um, Harbor Freight. That's what I was trying to think of. Harbor Freight has airbrushes for twenty bucks. I mean, even if you go, even if you go get one of those, you can do uh, a Canadian Tire Special. Here. Even if you go get one of those, uh, you can do wonders with it. I mean, they're not the best airbrushes in the world, but they'll, they'll work. You know, you can do some good stuff with them. Uh, and it might not hurt if, you're, if you've never airbrushed before to get something like that, you know, to experiment with and work with. So um, anyway, uh, so. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah, I had it. I haven't shaved because I hadn't been anywhere since I've been snowed in. <laughs> uh, so I guess to remind you that, uh, of course, Vinny in just a little while, um, in, uh, tomorrow night, uh, you have, um, Sparky. And Thursday, you got Hot Rod Rodney. Friday, of course, is uh, Cousin Vinny. And I know there's some people on Saturday, and I can't think of who it is. But uh, but also on Sunday, you've got the you got the guys on Sunday. Probably Heath. Heath is it, is this your Sunday for your sidetrack Sunday? Who's whose Sunday is this? Third rail Thursday. Okay, James. Um, and Vinny, uh, Vinny's waiting. So uh, promote your channels real quick if you want to. Uh, but I appreciate y'all sticking with me. Um, I hope y'all did learn something. I learned something because I just, like I said, this is the first time I've tried it. So, <laughs> and uh if I find any, uh, if I do anything else to it, I'll let you know next time. But uh, I think I'm going to call that one pretty good at least.
enjoyed every enjoyed everybody being here. I hope I said hi to everybody. If I didn't, I apologize, but uh, I did uh, did enjoy doing this tonight. So y'all take it easy and uh, and y'all have a very good evening. And once again, I appreciate it. Make sure, make sure I put this in the description. I there's if you've got a MeWe account, go in and subscribe to our model train group. I put in the link in the description. So uh, anyway, enjoyed it, and take care. Y'all have a good evening. <laughs>